Some people say, I love Yakko dogs. I love ice cream. I love Boost Tracks ice cream. I love Frosted Flakes in the middle of the night. You know, uh, just, right? How many of you love cheesecake and raspberry sauce? I do, you know, but, but just, 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 how about the wine? How about your husband? You love them? And if you've been ministering as long as I've been preaching, you would know that every answer, every answer I heard, the root cause to finding that healing, that peace, that joy, that knowledge, that God's will, is knowing appropriate love. Do you know that? These things start happening for you. You follow me? Is anybody following me? Yeah. Knowing the love of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, please, in verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want to talk to you about this for a couple of weeks. I want to, I want to teach you about it. I want you to write some things down that may stir your heart. It may make you think, you know, what, what's, what's going on? What's, what's, what do you mean? What's, what's, what's happening with this? Here, I want to take you on a little journey here. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Folks, what does that mean? Basically, you can be, Sister Ruthie, I saw yours. I think it was. This one is yours too? I can, I can break this. I'm not going to break this. <laughs> I know all, I know the Bible. New Testament, Old Testament, Proverbs. I know them all. I memorize them. Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, other languages, I memorize them. Historically, I know them. Are you impressed? Impressed? And, uh, listen to me. I am spiritual, watch me roar. It says you're a clanging symbol, man. Are you following me? If you have every intellectual gift, and that sometimes is the problem, is that we cognitively, we, we rationally, we, we through the method of our brain, want to fix things, Restore things or repair things that have gone wrong in our life, right? So we say, you know, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I, I'm, I'm going to do this and this and this. And I'm going to learn this and this and that. And I'm going to learn this and this and that. And I found that, you know, 80% of people who study psychology are cracked up. Because they're trying to heal themselves. They're trying to find out, why does my brain think the way it thinks? They last about 10 to 15, 20 years in service. And then they burn out. It's true. Check that out on the internet. <laughs> Them and dentists. You know? I'd kill myself if I were looking in your mouth too. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> but listen to this here. Point number one, if you want to write it down. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, Here you go, look. Everything. Everything. I say. I say is ineffective. Come on, somebody. Anybody follow me? If I Speak in tongues. If I shout, I jump for joy, and I do this, and I know this, and I know that, but I don't know how to love people. I don't know the art of speaking the truth in love. That means not just telling you the truth because it's the truth, and I'm going to be the one to undress you and let you know. But it means speaking the truth in love. It means having the truth and wearing a silk glove when you administer. That's what David Wilkerson said, not me. He said that silk glove, man. Always do it with kindness and with love. He says, because if you have every gift and know everything about the Bible, 
but you don't have, but you don't have what? But you don't have love. Everything that you say is ineffective. Think with me right now. Do you want your words to be ineffective? Come on, anybody? Then they better come mingled with love. How many of you have families that, that are just like, just like, oh my God, I walk in the door and it's like a war zone. What happened to you? What did I do in my youth to make you all hate each other so much? Are you always going to be fighting to the very end? Anybody know what I'm talking about or is it just me in my house? Come on, I mean, I'm, I mean, okay, how many of you know that there were problems in the past? Drama this, drama that. They're talking about them. They're talking about, they're living in one room. They're living in the other. They come over to visit. They're talking. They're, they're always, am I right or wrong? And it's like, it's like, man, the, the, the speech of hate. Even when something is true and somebody is manipulating and taking advantage, if if you say it, if you continually speak hate and speak hate to somebody, it makes everything you say ineffective. Are you following me today? If I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but I have not love, I'm doing nothing but making noise. You want to straighten out some of our families? Let's start giving them words of comfort. Words of love, words of encouragement. Things that lift up, not knock down. Things that build up. Love builds up, love does not knock down. Amen? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. You ready? The second one I want to share with you is this. Here's my glasses. Ephesians 4, 15. Ephesians 4, 15. <clears throat> speaking the truth in love, that you, by speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, even Christ. You follow me? If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries, but have not love, I have nothing. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Let me, let me share with you the second one. Speaking the truth in love. Take me to 1 Corinthians 8.1. 1 Corinthians 8.1. I'll show you this. We'll give you the second point. Somebody find me a stick or something. Louie, find me a stick from the back there. Let me fix that right now so we can end this nightmare. Thank you, bro. I'll put you in, okay, when you get back. Check it out. Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we have all we have we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Knowledge. Now let's just talk about knowledge for a second. We're in the age now where today I Skyped a couple of people. Anybody know what Skype is now? Everybody know? Anybody do it yet? I've, I've done it with I've done it with Jack and Bev. We had our staff meeting and had Bev at the end on my computer talking with her. And you can now see each other. It's free phone calls. So I got my friend who's a millionaire. He said, I don't even have to. I give you a thousand bucks if you come down here and set it up. Hey, buy what you want. I'll give you my card, Jimmy. You know? So with this secretary, I got her to set him up. I said, Oh my God, I see you. Oh my God. Hey, is that your house? And, and I walked him around with my computer and said, man, you guys got snogged there. He said, wow. He, he called on. He, he stopped the people in his little factory and called them on. And, Come in here. See Pastor Jim. Pastor Jim, I got somebody here to say hello. He says, okay, listen. He's talking to the secretary. I want cameras for every computer tonight. Cameras for everybody's computer. And Pastor Jim says a little microphone. Okay, so, so they're going to go Skype. He says, we can talk to people. We're going to buy. Now, now Turner Roofing is going to send their customers a camera that says from Turner Roofing Company, I want to see you in person when we do business. Wow. <laughs> I 
go to city limits, gets a little bump off of that. <laughs> right? Because he was amazed at the fact, at what? He was amazed at knowledge. You mean I got all this money? My kids all know Skype. They all have Macs. They all have this. They have networks. They do this and that. And, and, and no one's brought me up to speed with this on an iPhone. He can show me, show me what they did on the roof. Me, 65, I can't get up off of, on, on the roof anymore. My guys can show me. My foreman can now show me what, what's being done. And I can say, that's not enough. In my day, we did more by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He's saying, I, I want Skype. I want the camera. Give me the iPhone. They get, get everybody one. Everybody gets microphones and, I, and cameras. I want to know what everybody, I want to see your face when I talk to you and you say, yeah, 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 I'm busy working. You eat a donut. <laughs> anyway, you might say, or, but, but here's the point, okay? And I don't want to talk about voyeurism or, you know, you know taking over my computer. I, I'm not, he's not forcing it on he's, he's just saying how wonderful it is. After all this Facebook, everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's got a story. I want to see your face. I want to see you. How about the day of just giving your SSI and that's it, and I'll tell you in 20 minutes if you got the charge card or not? I mean, they don't even want to hear my story anymore. The numbers will tell us if you got the card. And we've gotten to the place where we have so much knowledge. I mean, we're now in the year 2010. Knowledge has come to the place to where, listen, all of you have a cell phone? We really don't need home phones anymore, right? Right? My kids don't even know what a rotary phone is. They've seen eight tracks on movies. James Bond movies. They think, wow, that's weird. <laughs> My kid bought a, a, a stereo, a, a record player at a yard sale. He says, well, I'm going to keep this forever. It'll be worth millions. <laughs> Timothy, 25. A record player. He's never seen a record. A record of 45. He did not know what to do. A 45 with a thread beat him. But so much knowledge, every, every night, these kids are back, now they're making farms, they're having cows, they're, I, I, I don't know, people are selling them chickens, they're, they're doing everything, I'm like, Dad, look, I, I've got a farm too, I'm like, good, could you get a job now as well, good, I'm glad you're doing farming, could you plant a few seeds and sell some crops and bring some money into this house. I've got a virtual farm, I've got a virtual friend, I'm, now pretty soon I'm going to have a virtual sex relationship too. That'll still be sin. And that'll still be sin. So now, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not used to it. Are you following? Hello. If I had the gift of prophecy, if I can fathom all the mysteries, all the mysteries, every mystery, all the knowledge, all the knowledge, if I had, you know, you know, every, every update on all the knowledge, Everything updated, more knowledge, no more, no more, no even more, no more. Pastors today can know more than pastors knew 20 years ago by virtue of information availability. Are you following me? Which means our servants have to be on the edge. I mean, they got it right on the edge because you know, know more than the average person knew 20 years ago too. And don't have a master's degree. But with what you know now, they got a master's degree. Hello, anybody listening? Listen to me. If I know all things, and if I have all knowledge, but I don't have love, all I know is incomplete. Somebody say amen. I can know everything from soup to nuts to A, B, C to the A to Z to everything. I can know everything. If I don't know love, I don't have a true grasp of what love is. Most of you think love is sex. Love is being touched. Love is touching. Many of us grew up with different, different definitions of love, different thoughts, different feelings, different Different things. Of, am I right or wrong? Do we all have a different concept of love? There's one concept of love. 
How about if our aspiration could be, you know, I want to be healed. I want to have joy. I want to have peace. I want to know the will of God. And I want to know it all through the context of first knowing the pure and the true unadulterated love of God that sets me free. The love of God that lets me know that everything that has ever happened to me has happened for a good purpose so that I might become the wonderful, awesome, powerful person that I am today. So that today I could thank a father. So that today I could even think of the grace to be thankful and grateful for how God changed me. Amen. Everything you know, if you don't have love, becomes incomplete. You're still a failure. That's why we still feel like a failure. Because we're still, as the song says, looking for love in all the wrong places. I'll try this book. I'll try that. I'll go to that seminar. I'll go to this seminar. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll try exercising. I'll try this. I'll try that. I'll try running. I'll try Olympics. I'll try sport. I'll try hanging with a different class of people. I'll get a better home. I'll get a better job. I'll go back to school. And we try everything except God. What is your love? Not the love of man, not the touch of man, not the breaching of the boundaries of my soul, but what is the love of God that somebody who is so huge and so unfathomable and so wonderful that holds the sky together by the very words of his mouth, what is that love that, that a God so big could live in a man so little like me and then save me? And after I'm saved, I want the old kitchen back. That is ridiculous. Come on, somebody. Does that make any sense at all? You tried it tonight? I'm going to give you a question and answer time tonight. Isn't that cool? Well, I, I really like that. Give me a verse 2. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 2. All I know is incomplete, number 2. If I have all this knowledge, everything I know, I can know so much, I can have a triple one, I can have so many degrees, they call me Dr. Fahrenheit. <laughs> and all I'll know will still be incomplete because I don't have love. You see the emphasis that God is placing on love and the importance that it is to you to know love? Anybody here ever fall out of love? How the heck do you do that? Somebody tell me how to do that. How do you fall out of love? I got a little story for you. My personal feeling is, if you fell out of love, you were never in love to begin with. You are probably in lust. Just my position, not biblical. Argue with me if you want to, I'll be in that office. Okay? Biblical stuff, that office. But my point is, 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 is if you have really loved somebody, you find out that there's a responsibility to love. And that, and that listen to me, you don't love a woman for 25 years if there's younger 19, 20 year olds coming out the box looking brand new and you still love the woman you've been with 25 years, that's because you've made a choice to love that woman. That's because love is not a feeling. And that's what we think is that love is a feeling. Love is not, love is an action. Love is an action. I act on what? Listen, I act on loving. I do loving. I love. I love because that's the way God loves. It's unconditional. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what I know. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how it ends up. I love you because God put us together. That's the way it's going to be. No matter what happens, we will finish this race together. Fall out of love with me? Take a week vacation somewhere. Find out. I mean, I cook, but I do a lot of other things you like. <laughs> and we'll leave it at, and as far as Gump would say, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Galatians 5, 6. I want you to see this. I have a 
haven't given you point number three yet, have I? You ready? Give me, give me Galatians. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. What does that mean? Then you got it? But faith working through love. Don't matter what you've done. Don't matter what you know. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you've been from. It's about love. It's about learning the love of God. God wants saved people to mature and lost people to be found. And he wants you in the middle of his great rescue plan. And that's why you're here. And while you're here, you enjoy the ride by being blessed if you're obedient. And it's also going to rain on you if you're obedient. But you're going to love both the rain and the sunshine because of your attitude of love. Are you following me? It's an attitude. Haven't you been to houses where like every day it's like, my God, can you people just get along today? Come on, am I right? And anybody, please, come on. So, somebody back there. Even if you've lived in a house like that, if, if, maybe not now and so, and so you can keep your hands down, but if you've ever lived in a house like that, raise your hand. Where we're like, can you be, do you realize that your family, there's nobody else who loves you but me. If you're going to hate me, there's nobody. You can't hate me or you have nobody. I mean, you better make a choice and make it quick. 